I always begin by moving my king pawn out. E4. Let's say your opponent doesn't get to move. This is how you should develop your pieces. Your next move should be d4. Now this is only, of course, if black hasn't made another central pawn move to challenge that square. So now your e pawn and your d pawn control this whole area of the board. This is very important. And also notice how your bishops are wide open. They can slice into the game. Your queen is open. Your knights can come out. Having your pawns on e4 and d4 gives you an excellent central control. Next, I would develop my knight to f3. There's a saying in opening play, knights before bishops. So in many opening positions, you'll have a choice. You can bring out either your knight or your bishop. In those situations, usually you bring out your knight first. So knight f3. Next, you might play bishop c4. This opens up your king to be able to castle to the king's side. Notice all the pieces are moving towards the center of the board. I'm not playing moves like knight h3. I'm playing moves like knight f3, controlling the middle. Now I might castle. My king is nice and safe. The f2, g2, and h2 pawns are in front of my king, guarding him. Very, very safe. Now, another important idea is that we don't want to advance our pawns ahead of our king, at least not too far. I often describe this as creating air, as if the king can feel a draft. In other words, if I were to push these pawns, say to h4 and g4, my king would get much, much less safe, because pieces could slip in the cracks. So here my king is very safe. I have my knight out, my bishop out. Now I might bring my other knight into the game, knight c3. And now my other bishop could come out, either to e3 or f4. Next, I would bring my queen, and this connects the rooks. This is a saying in development in chess, connect your rooks. If I have all my minor pieces out, and my queen, and I castle, my rooks are connected. They're both ready to jump into the middle of the board, for example, d1 and e1. In general, you want rooks on open lines, so probably either the e-file or the d-file, or another one will have opened up. You want to put your rook on the open file, so if the b-pawn weren't there, this rook would belong on b1. If the c-pawn weren't there, the rook would belong on c1. You want your rooks on open files. This is the classical developmental scheme. But of course, your opponent gets to move too.